I'm really excited about uh, today's tea time, not because I'm um, usually not, but because we, we, we have a special tea time today because I remember we do have alumni presenting at tea time, but it hasn't been specially yeah, set aside. Like the, the, there is no session that we've ever set aside to say that we're focusing on alumni and what they're doing after graduation. But the committee thought that it's a good idea to look into what our alumni in various parts of uh, Africa are doing and try to highlight uh, their work. And today, that's why I'm calling it special because we have uh, our two esteemed alumni, one from uh, Egypt, actually joining in from Egypt. And then we have Dr. Mavima who is uh, here in Michigan, but uh, from, <laughs> from Ohio. <laughs> Shingi, you, you, you never moved, you know? Yeah, he's, he's uh, based in, in Ohio right now. And uh, we're really happy and privileged to, ha to have you here because uh, you're busy, we do know that. Like currently it's 10 over, after 10 p.m. in Egypt. And then I know Dr. Mavima, we've talked about your schedule um, because the classes have begun, but we're really happy that you made time to be here to be able to talk about your work and uh, what you're doing to connect with communities, to make an impact, to make a difference in whichever way in your local communities. So uh, we're going to begin with uh, Egypt and Nawal will be our first presenter. Uh, Nawal is the founder and board director of Haduta Mesri, an NGO in Egypt. And also Nawal has authored a book chapter called Facilitation for Change in the book, uh, Sprouting Seeds of Radical Education, Stories of Transformative Change from Around the World that just came out in 2021. And uh, I would like, um, after I give her uh, the time to talk more about herself when she graduated from MSU, what department, I think that will be a good part of continuing the introduction. And then we, after Nawal's presentation and discussion, we'll have Dr. Shingi Mavima, who is currently assistant professor of history in the history department in the University of Toledo, Ohio. So we are going to go in the order I said Egypt, and then we'll come back to, to Zimbabwe. And at this time, I welcome Nawal to continue the introduction a little bit. Just tell us about your program at MSU when you graduated and then how you got onto the, 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 the project, the, the, the program that you're leading right now in, in Egypt. Thank you so much again and welcome Nawal. Thank you, Dr. Damaris, and thank you for inviting me. Let me share the screen. Mm -hmm. You can see it now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to say good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, it is a great honor to be among you all today. Um, uh, I am, my name is Nawal Ghattas. Uh, I'm from Egypt and I was graduated from College of, uh, of Education at Michigan State University. Uh, I got my master's in higher adult and lifelong education. Um, uh, I will be talking today about an initiative I started in 2011 and how it became a non-profit organization, serving mainly uh, undergraduate and graduate students. I want to draw your attention about uh, the power of the words of encouragement, the power of the words of encouragement, because in my case, it was transformed into a nonprofit organization. Uh, when I returned back from Michigan State University in 2011, um, it was the time of the revolution in Egypt, and the situation was unclear and, and actually unstable. Um, a friend used to work as a janitor in my previous organization. He came to welcome me back and he told me about his daughter, how his daughter was very good this year in school. 
uh, and she uh, got a high score. She was in grade nine. And he is going to send her, he agreed with her, with his wife to send her to technical school. Uh, technical school is uh, for three years and she will be graduated without going into the university. Oh, but he is not able to send her to the secondary school. A student who wants to join the university has to um, be in, enrolled in secondary school. Um, so, despite the fact that the Egyptian education system is free, passing the secondary school exam to join university is financially exhausted for the parent. And is, I am quoting someone right now, is a virtual state of emergency for the student and their families. The parents have to work day and night to be able to cover the hidden expenses like uh, private lessons, to uh, help their children to pass the final exam, uh, which determines their university admission. For that reason, so many families, especially in the marginalized area, send their daughter to um, the technical school instead of secondary school. Let me back to my story. So I responded to this friend, why don't you encourage her to follow her dream and make things get better? Who knows? I just said these words expecting nothing could happen. For my surprise, uh, the second day I received the SMS on my cell phone and he wrote like this, I did transfer her admission paper to secondary school. Um, since this moment, I felt responsible and I started supporting her financially and emotionally. And this continued for three years. In 2014, she was admitted in the College of Education. Uh, I was really happy for her and it was a moment of reflection to me. Okay, why don't we support more girls who have the same challenges? Um, but for myself to do it alone, I can't. So I called for a meeting for my friends who have uh, the same passion and vision for higher education. And we gathered together in a coffee shop in the summer of 2015. I presented the idea to them and I told them the story of this year. And they welcomed it. So most of our group, we obtained educational scholarship uh, inside and outside Egypt. And some of us uh, got their masters in, in North America. Some of us, they got it in Europe. Um, so, yani, we believe in lifelong learning and we call ourselves like lifelong learner. Uh, so we agreed to start together an initiative and we called it uh, the right of access to higher education for girls, the right of access to higher education. So in 2014, we, we agreed to support eight girls who have uh, challenges to uh, continue their higher education and we chose those girls from different governorate when i say government rate means province like province uh, we chose them from different culture different religions so and each one of us decide donate a specific amount of money and they used to send the money to me and i transfer the money to their girls um, and those, uh, yani, we called it mini scholarship. So we send them mini scholarship each month to cover their expenses, uh, like um, transportation, private lessons, um, education and material, etc. Um, we do, as a group, believe that giving back, giving back to our country is one of our duties to support girls to have the same experience uh, we had when we uh, traveled or we pursued our master's degree. Yeah, I want to show you this slide I should. Okay. 
So from 2014 to 2019, we continued uh, supporting those girls and marginalized community to have access in higher education by sending them uh, many scholarship. Um, as of uh, our group, all of us, we work in the field of development. And in 2015, uh, we actually used to meet each three months to evaluate the initiative. And in 2015, we saw that it is not enough to send money uh, to the girls. We need to build their capacity. And we decided together to start uh, educational summer camp. Um, so it is an opportunity for us to get to know them and for them and their families. Um, to build a bridge of trust uh, between them and us. But the challenge here, we were, we were not an entity. We were not an organization or institution. Uh, we are just a group of friends. Um, how those girls will travel alone and they were uh, young and their families, uh, how they will trust us. So we asked each girl to bring her sister or mother with her. Uh, and it happened that in the summer of 2015, we conducted our first educational camp in Horgada. You may heard about Horgada. Horgada uh, is a beach resort town at the Red Sea. And I would like to say for all the girls and their mothers and sister was the first time ever to go to the beach and enjoy the Red Sea. Uh, the time we spent together was the best moment in my life. Uh, our group and the girls and their family were a very, very diverse group from different backgrounds, different culture, different religion, uh, different location. All the girls are coming from small villages. Uh, and some of us from Upper Egypt, some from Cairo, some from Lower Egypt, women, men, Christian, Muslims. So we conducted several sessions to get to know each other and, and we helped them to connect with themselves and to learn more about their potential, skills, talents. Uh, as our first educational camp focused on self-discovery. Uh, our motto in Haduta Masraya is ongoing learning journey starts from within. Ongoing learning journey starts from within. So the best way to start the learning journey is by learning about ourselves and our world view. So we become open to the world and uh, we can accept the change. We had time outside the meeting room and where we had fun together, eating, loving, singing. It was a, a unique time enclosed with love, peace, and joy. Um, it was really a very healthy community, uh, if I can call it this. And I've always said um, those precious moments awaken my soul. Um, we, continue, we continue conducting educational summer camp each year to keep the learning journey alive with them and to learn more about ourselves, them and their families. And we facilitated uh, many workshops such as uh, learning about their feeling and learning how to name their feeling. Uh, sometimes we have mixed feeling and we become confused about them. For example, I don't know if I am feeling sad, worried, or uh, afraid. So it was important to help them to recognize their feeling. Also, they learned about time management, budget management, how to deal with the stress, about the relationship and how to set boundaries. Um, so uh, after so this education camp, we used to have uh, fun with them. At the same time, we enhance their skills and help them to uh, connect to themselves. Uh, after they go back, uh, they implement uh, the learning or they apply the learning in their community with kids and uh, or with illiterate women. 
so they can do something really beneficial for them. I forgot to tell you that uh, we are the people, we are the facilitator and the trainer who used to conduct this, uh, this camp. Um, let me show you some picture of this camp. Uh, this was the first ever camp in 2015. Uh, so all the group here, of course, this is me. And I'll show you the leader. This is one of the leaders. She is a physician, but at the same time, she works in the field of development. Another leader also works in the field of development and our leader and another leader. And this one is a leader too. This girl is the girl I started with her in 2011. And those girls are the one we started with them in 2014. And this one too, this one, this one. And those are the mother of those girls. So in this camp, as I said before, we focused on self-discovery. And in the camp of 2016, we focused on how to deal with stress. And I forgot to tell you that um, I got an award from IFP, uh, which is International Fellowship Program uh, connected with Ford Foundation because my scholarship was uh, the one I got uh, from Michigan State University was from Ford Foundation. And it was, there is an award for the alumni. Uh, so I applied for, with the name of the initiative, the right of access to higher education. And I got $1,000 and we spent it on the camp of 2016. Um, this is the camp, uh, a group work in 2017. Uh, and this is the camp of 2018. And this is a camp of 2019. Uh, also, this is a uh, activity about social identity. Um, in 2018, we gathered as a group what happened. Is it okay now? Okay. So in 2018, we gathered as a group and we decided to register the initiative to be a nonprofit organization. Um, it was really a long, long procedure, but we did it. And we named it Haduta Masriya. And Haduta Masriya means an Egyptian tale or story, Egyptian story. Um, slide. Well, our vision. Our vision is a society enjoys its humanity. Our mission uh, to provide opportunities for the existence of an aware humanitarian society, seeking a lifelong learning and constructive change through the implementation of development program and uh, programs and projects. What are our core values? lifelong learning what i mean by lifelong learning like mental physical emotional and spiritual development uh, appreciation of diversity means everyone matters regarding their social status level of education gender religion age or nationality uh, participatory leadership decisions are made by consensus rather than pilot by pilot uh, peaceful coexistence, all human beings can live together in a time of tension as in peace time. Uh, genuine humanity, living the human values is essential for the existence of a healthy uh, humanity. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about our methodology. So our methodology, um, Haduta Masri adopt participatory approach uh, that appreciate each individual and prov provide a safe space for sharing experiences. Uh, we always in our activities, or most of our activities, we sit in a circle because in a circle there is no first or second. Everyone is equal. This is one of our approaches also. And also we adopt transformative learning theory in practice. 
um, uh, I am really admiring transformative learning series. So where we reflect on our frame of references, um, uh, habit of minds and world view, when people begin to critically reflect and examine their assumption, uh, their belief, uh, they would become more open, reflective, and willing to change. So this is our methodology. Uh, we work with university students, uh, students from high school, children in primary school, women, and different uh, governorate or province, like Cairo, Galilee, and many other students in uh, Aswan. Now I would like to talk about the projects. Uh, we have uh, the first and main project, the biggest one is called I am a genuine Egyptian. And the goal of I am genuine Egyptian is to develop the leadership, leadership skills for university girls and enhance the value of responsibility, belonging, and peaceful coexistence. What activities we conducted to achieve this goal? Um, for the value of responsibility, so each student, we call student mentors, each student is responsible for two children, and those children in primary school from seven to 12 years old. Uh, so they work with them, they meet with them twice a week, and each time for two hours, and they work with them according to a curriculum. Um, so part of the session is to enhance the reading or writing skill. And in this way, we keep children in school. And uh, the, the second part and the most important part for us is practicing the living values. We consider our organization a value-based organization. So each month we choose a specific value such as love, peace, um, tolerance, respect, and the mentor and the children, they practice uh, uh, the values through creative activities, can be coloring, telling a story, uh, acting, singing, playing a game, and also they take like a homework to apply this uh, value with their families and with their neighbors, with their friends and they come back and tell us how they applied the value. Um, so this is for the value of responsibility, how we achieve, uh, what, we do, what activity we do for the sense, promoting sense of belonging. We are trying to connect the mentor or the student who are undergraduate with the history of Egypt, especially with the ancient history. Um, so, yani last week, last month, and September 11 was the Egyptian Year Eve, and the mentor together agreed to conduct an activity to celebrate uh, the Egyptian Year Eve by uh, making uh, the mask of Tut Anch Amun, as you see in the picture here. Um, for the peaceful coexistence, um, working with people from different faiths, uh, religion, in our er organization, I would say I have a student for them, it was the first time ever to be in such an environment. Uh, it was an exposure for them to learn about the other. When I say the other, I mean from different religion. Uh, and to shift their thinking about the other and to accept the other. And now they are friends, they meet and have joyful and peaceful moments together, conduct activities together and have fun together and they go summer camp uh, together. I, I, will, yani I can say we have in our organization a very healthy family. Um, this is our main project and we still depend on our individual uh, funding from yani from the organization general assembly and the board members uh, or sometimes uh, someone from outside or uh, outside the general assembly or board member can donate for uh, for the project uh, 
uh, our second project called Ehki uh, Maya. Ehki Maya means in English, English it shared with me, and we just started this uh, project last month. We just, as you see in the picture, those are the facilitator. It was a training, training of trainer, and they, uh, they went back to work with adolescents here. And our goal is to discover their deep values and bust the adolescent stage smoothly uh, uh, in a healthy and peaceful way. Uh, also, we have a program called the Volunteer with Us. Uh, and I would like to say that the association is an open and safe space to invest the talent and potential of young men uh especially from universities uh graduate and undergraduate and we received around yani, more than 100 uh, uh, volunteers online and offline uh, the one you see in the picture he is a dentist he came with his friend and they have busy work but they wanted to do something that has a meaning and different from their work so they conducted um, a session in a very creative way to the children about how to keep their teeth healthy and strong. Also, we received uh, uh, many uh, volunteers uh, to do uh, origami, the Japanese uh, art of origami with children. We received a volunteer who conducted first aid workshop with the children. Uh, we received also volunteer. I have volunteer also from uh, private university. I have from the British university. One of them is teaching children uh, English. Another one used to write for us the newsletter. And some of them, they uh, volunteer as digital marketing. And we have opening, uh, volunteer opening, like uh, fundraising and uh, documentation and uh, they can come also if, if they are able and have the time they can come to the organization and conduct open days for the children um, the second uh, we also mentors and volunteers they used to do uh, conduct initiative outside uh, the organization uh, like the one we did in April and was posted in the Global Service Day of the International Alumni. Um, the mentor felt that um, the street vendors, uh, who are the people, work very hard, but uh, we need to give them a word of encouragement. So they designed the uh, appreciation, colorful appreciation card, and they wrote a beautiful word for, of encouragement to them. And they went in, in the street and they distributed uh, the appreciation card and uh, hand sanitizer to them. Um, Cultural exchange, we have received uh, also volunteers from outside the country. As we have a sign protocol with Isaac or the organization, I don't know if you know Isaac organization, it's an international NGO that send, uh, send the student outside the country for cross culture and cultural exchange. So we received a student from Cameroon and he taught the mentor French for one month. And we received uh, a volunteer from Poland, but she is a volunteer from Poland. She lives in Cairo. Uh, her husband works in the, in the embassy. And we received a volunteer from Peru. Um, so as I said, our organization is open for everyone who wants to invest their talent and skills online or offline. We have a protocol with Michelle Sous Foundation in New Jersey, USA. Uh, we received donation to implement the project, the main project, uh, I am genuine re Egyptian. So because in Egypt, uh, it is really difficult for individual to uh, donate from outside, we have to get approval from uh, the Ministry of Social Solidarity first, 
and it takes a long, long time. So we have already protocol with them and we receive fund if anyone wants to donate, they send funds through Michelle Source Foundation. Um, in November uh, last year, 2020, uh, we received a request from Helwan University. Helwan University is uh, uh, located in Cairo and they asked us to accept a specific number of their students to do their training field in our organization. And we received 12 of them. Um, as you see in the picture, these are the students. Uh, and we trained them for uh, three weeks first before they start working with the kids. Uh, also, we, we help the, the mentors to learn about civil society its advantage and the concept of volunteerism, community leadership. Uh, also, they uh, participate in conducting and facilitating workshop for the children. Uh, also, they apply the tool of field training in our organization. Uh, I want to, uh, Yanni, I just want to tell you some of the words of the student. Uh, about their experience with Hadouta Misriya, the student of Helwan University. One of them said there are many memories with the children, but the closest to my heart is the work of a handmade lantern from me, for me was made on the occasion of the month of Ramadan from the creativity of a child named Antonius. Um, Another one said, I'm proud that I learned many powerful principles through your help for children, and I want to become as influential as you. Uh, another one said, the best moment I spent in the association were the activities with the children, playing with them and studying for them, and the little girl called Mahra'i left a great impression on me and my love for her. Another one said, the best moment are when I got uh, to know new people, we become very friends, also children, and when participating in activities and games to convey a certain value, such as cooperation, respect, and acceptance for the other. Um, this one is a success story, and I just, I'm quoting what the mentor said, about her experience with Hadouta Masriya, the mentor, her name is Merna. So Merna saying before joining Hadouta Masriya, I was just a normal person who had some dreams and ambition, but didn't know how to act. After joining Hadouta Masriya, I had a chance to be open to the world. I discovered many things about myself that I didn't know before. I know how to prioritize my ambition and my thoughts, control my anger and handle it. To be myself was no pretended. I started to see the love and care in every person I met, which made me love myself. Every time I gave myself a chance to listen to the other, I found positive energy, love and laughter from the heart, made me love the place more and more with my heart and soul. The moment I enter Hadouta Masriya, I enter a beautiful world where there is nothing bad happens. A world that is different from outside world. I have changed from the moment I joined Hadouta Masriya. Being a member of this community is the best thing that I, have, I am grateful for. Being part of Hadouta Masriya is a decision I wasn't sure about at first, but now is the greatest decision. I am sure about. Um, well, I want to conclude that what is the impact of Hadouta Masriya on the community is keeping children in school, encouraging university education for girls, encouraging the culture of volunteerism among university students, connecting university students with people from different backgrounds, promoting sense of responsibility in undergraduate students, 
uh, we conduct mother awareness session and how to raise their children in conductive ways and helping girls uh, who the teen teens girls to buzz the adolescent stage in more peaceful way um, this is what I want to, you to learn about Haduta Masriya and I'll ask you if you like Haduta Masriya, please join our Facebook page and Instagram. Um, thank you everyone. <laughs> oh. oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Nawal. I've mentioned this before. The work you do is just on a personal level, it's something that speaks to my heart because I, I care so much. As much as I'm not doing as much as you're doing, I admire the work you do. Thank but you. Uh, women empowerment, um, girls' education is something that is really dear to my heart. And I had mentioned to you before that we have a similar program between uh, our students here at MSU from Africa and girls in the community that come from different parts of Africa where we, where we have a mentorship program. And uh, it's really what you're doing. And, and, and so many things, I was taking notes as you speak, uh, especially when you talked about giving back as a duty. It, it really is a duty, I take it as a duty. As much as um, we do it in different levels, um, in different circumstances, but Responding to a need in the community is really, really a duty for each and every one of us. And the, the last part, the paragraph that you read about one of your, your, your leaders before joining that was talking about um, how they had a vision, but they didn't know how to act on it. You provided a chance for them to be a part of a bigger process, a bigger mission. And, and that's really wonderful. There are so many people I, I really do know that there are so many people that uh, want to do something for their communities, but they don't, don't have an avenue. Providing a space like this where somebody who has been looking forward to a way that they can give a hand back to the community, it's, it's, it's really very powerful. There, there's so much that I can talk. If <laughs> you've given a chance, I will talk about my own personal experience, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to give people in the audience a chance to ask um, or comment, give uh, some comments, ask some questions for about 10 minutes before we transition to the second speaker. But really, um, it's wonderful to hear Thank about the project. Thank you so like much, you. Damaris. You are very nice and kind. And I would like to say, uh, Yanni, I would like to say you are all welcome to volunteer with us online. And if it happened and you came to Egypt, please contact me and come to the organization. Yeah, for me, I'm not going to wait until I come. I, I will, we will talk about how we can connect and sure. what sure. we, can, we can do together. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. But everybody else, you, you hear the invitation from, from uh, Nawal on behalf of Aduta Mesreya. Please, if you have friends or yourself that um, would love to, to be a part of this big course and uh, really a needed course, you're welcome to join. More information, if you need anything more, I, I'll be happy to connect you with Nawal after, or Nawal, yes, you can please. drop your email. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, yeah, you can leave your email in the chat. Sure. Whichever way, but, but um, you be sure that whoever that wants to reach you will be able to do that. Sure, so, okay. So at this time, I open it to anyone that has a question or a comment for Nawal before we move on. You can unmute yourself, please, and, and go ahead and speak. Hi, um, I, 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 um, I mean, I don't even know where to start, but I, I think you are doing like an amazing job. Like, um, Thank you. it's my first time coming to this meeting and, um, I guess I actually came at the right time because the things you're doing over there with those kids and um, and the children, you're basically helping every children at um, almost the moment their mothers just deliver to them. You know, you just pick them up and then you just start from there. Kids, teenagers, even university students. So I really commend you and your team. You guys are doing an amazing job. And um, actually, I've already gone on your Instagram. I've already followed you guys. So... 
Thank you. you. I, 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 I'm really impressed and um, I'm gonna um, get your email and I would like to connect, you know, just any way we can actually, you know, help either financially or any other means to, you know, to bolster everything that you are doing. You guys are doing amazing job. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your nice word. And I am waiting your email. Thank you, Habib. And uh, Nawal already shared the email. You can see it. I did share my email and uh, had Dota Masri email. I also the one who opened and respond. And also I will share the link of the Facebook page to Haduta Masriya. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Habib. Um, I feel what you're, you're saying right now. Anybody else who would like to share, ask a question? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Nawal. Um, thank you so much for sharing this 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 amazing work. I mean, I won't re I won't, you know. I think the 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 better part of everything has been said already. I concur with what everybody has been saying. Uh, it's amazing, and you also presented uh, your cause very well. So, um, indeed, I wanted to ask, what is and you may have mentioned it earlier. Um, but what is the biggest sort of pushback or challenge you have faced in your in the in in, in running your organization? Yeah, the biggest challenge right now is funding. Up to now, we are depending on individual funding from the board member and general assembly. And one day, well, Yani, last year, a woman from US, she visited Egypt and she donated for us uh, $5,000. And we're running this project with this money, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first, uh, Yani, the biggest challenge for us is funding. We applied so many agencies, but yeah. up to this moment, we didn't get. We get nothing up to this, but we are trying and writing proposal each month, and hopefully we will get one one day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. So just a follow up now. So let's say um, there's an organization or an individual that would like love to donate. They'll have to go through the organization that you mentioned in Texas and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. New Jersey. New Jersey. So they, they have can to donate to... online, but they they okay. write in the note for Haduta Masraya. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, or if they are writing a check, they write also, there is a memo, uh, that one in the check, they write for Haduta Masraya. I have right. the information and the bank account, yeah. And actually they send us the money whenever they got money for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's wonderful, and thank you so much. Thank you. Nobody has a question. I have one, Nawal, just quickly sure. before we continue. I always see, because I follow you on, on social media, I see that you also have men in your group in the leadership, and sometimes when you're having volunteer opportunities, you do have some men there. And um, it's not typical, I mean, not, not to say that there aren't, but it's not typical to have uh, men or a significant number of men involved in, in organizations that I focused on women, girls. So how, how did you manage to do that? Actually, Doris, in our board member, we have just one man and the one you saw in the picture um, and he is very committed. Um, we have few of them. Um, but I can say the reason that we don't have lots of men because they are working hard and they are responsible for their families and even their studies, they are trying to work also to pay their expenses. But we still attract some, like the two dentists were two men. We ha I have a volunteer came this week and he is very, very passionate. And, we told him he come to for and he should come for two hours and he stayed in the organization for eight hours. And uh, some of them are, they are very committed. And I would like to also mention some of them they want to get a scholarship to 
pursue their education outside like our scholarship, a big scholarship. So they have to have a letter from us, a recommendation letter or reference. So this is a motive also. But some of them are really have the passion uh, um, and serve in the organization. Yeah, Thank you I so hope much. I answered your question. I You've don't... answered and uh, I, I will always have a question or a comment to make and I don't want to continue yes, doing please. that. I'm hoping that uh, you're going to stay until the end. I know it's late for sure, but I don't know if your time will allow you to stay until the end. But if I, somebody, will. I will that's... stay. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. I am so eager perhaps... to listen also. Yes. Okay. Great. If somebody later on wants to comment or say something, they can. But at this time, I do want to welcome Dr. Mavima to talk about Clubhouse. In, in, in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much. And as I said, please introduce yourself a little more about, uh, especially when you graduated and when this started, so, so then we can hear more. But thank you so much and, and welcome. So, sounds good. Uh, let me first... Uh, sure. Okay. I'm trying to... Uh, yeah. Okay. It's all good. Um, Are you trying to share? Yeah, let me just bring my screen up here. I think, uh, let me check again. I thought you had the... No, no, I do. I do have the permission. Oh, maybe. okay. That's great. Yeah. I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So thank you, guys. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Choti, for having me. Um, I feel like I'm always here, uh, <laughs> but but I love it, uh, and I do appreciate the, the the audience, especially for this cause that is ever so dear to my heart. That uh, you know, there's uh, you know, there's many things that I felt like giving up on, but this has never really been one of them. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about Clubhouse International. And I put here the spark that lit a wildfire. And that is more trying to speak it into existence than the fact that we have actually gotten a wildfire yet. You know, we're still working on, on, on getting it out there. But uh, that's, uh, and I'll show a, a short video at the end that sort of ties to, to why this, this quote, which is... Um, which is a common metaphor in 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 Shona, in, in Shona um, verbiage, you know, uh, from a Shona proverb. Um, so the name is Shingima Vima, born and raised in Zimbabwe, uh, graduated from Michigan State University in 2019 uh, with a PhD in African American and African Studies. Um, and that that has been my large connection with uh, with the with the Spartans. Uh, also, spent a lot of time working with the with the African Studies Center in the African Studies Center, uh, which I continue to do right now in some capacity. I you know that's you know if I tell them that I'm their family one more time, I think uh, you know I might have overdone it. You know, but I, you know they they are they are my family, um, and I'm always glad to be back here. And so. But the thing between those two spaces, the African Studies Center and the and the and the program, the AAAS program I was in, you will even though by the time I came to MSU, I'd founded this organization already. This organization had been going for a couple of years. Uh, a lot of my ideological understanding of uh, of um, of the program. Of, 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 of approaching um, African communities and philanthropy and so forth have been shaped in large part by my experience with those two organizations. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we proceed. So Clubhouse International, let me talk a little bit about the context out of which Clubhouse International emerges. Okay. So the context. Born and raised in Zimbabwe myself, uh, I would have been in my teen years, right through the early 2000s. Uh, so this is really the pivotal experience. Then I came to the US, you know, 2006 um, and, and so forth. 
but so those are the, the formative years of my life that really sort of turned me on to want to do something back home. So what was happening in Zimbabwe at this time that would make somebody uh, even coming out of high school be determined to get into this sort of work? And I thought that, you know, it would be, it would be, you know, to bring you up to speed, I can talk about a few factors that were happening. So one of the things that was prominently happening in, in Zimbabwe was, so where to start? Okay. So in, in late 1990s, early 2000s, there's a land redistribution program, which, uh, although noble in intent, uh, ended up happening in, in a haphazard way. And long story short, uh, it ended up leading to the economy being tanked, right? You know, there are more nuanced studies about that. Uh, but, you know, just to make the point that the economy went down drastically from a country that was called the breadbasket of, 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 of sub-Saharan Africa to, to being a pariah state, right? By the early 2000s going forward. Um, and these figures here for, for the annual GDP, GDP growth kind of, uh speak to that yeah that you can tell that you know in the 80s and even for parts of the early 1990s the gdp growth was 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 significant then beginning in the late 1990s and all the way down to the to to the mid 2000s here it's it's not only is it negative but it's drastically negative right 20 minus 20 percent almost and the, the, the think about these are the formative years of 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 that's what I'm seeing as a, as a young person who's growing in their consciousness as a teenager, right? And again, in, in, in 2005, maybe going up to 2008, where sort of the, the idea of the Zimbabwean economy. So that is happening here due to that. Uh, I, say, I say that land reform program, but it's not singularly responsible, right? The, the international backlash and so forth uh, lead to that collapse. Um, in addition to that, in the 90, early in the 80s and 90s, uh, the 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 plague that is HIV AIDS has also been hitting the country hard. And I remember at one point in the early 2000s, it was up to one in every four uh, people in Zimbabwe was uh, was uh, was 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 uh, infected with HIV AIDS. Right, so it was really running havoc. And I remember at one point hearing stats that would say the average life expectancy in the country now is is around you know, maybe like 30 years old, <laughs> which is ridiculous, right? It's ridiculously young. So, you know, with HIV AIDS, because this is largely hitting the, you know, the, the younger people who are the, the, the most sexually active group, right? So, and those are also the people who are the workforce. So again, that's further tanking the economy because all those people are being removed from the picture as well. Um, so those are two factors. Then add to that a lot of uh, socio-political discord that arises from these things. In fact, I checked today because the situation around HIV AIDS got a lot better in the past uh, few years um, with antiretroviral drugs and so forth and education. But I was looking at the numbers today as I was preparing for this. And I saw that the number here says 1.4 million people with, living with HIV in Zimbabwe that's around, um, you know, the country is maybe like 15 million people. So that's almost like a tenth of the people still to this day, 15 years after the worst has been. And, you know, some of those numbers are still, are still very jarring to look at, right? 12.8% uh, adult HIV prevalence, you know, but, you know, ages 15 to 49. So that is still pretty stark. So these are, this is the environment out of which we emerge, right? And now this last picture here, is at the peak of um, the, 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 the money here, $100 trillion. Uh, you know, is at the peak of, uh, of, um, of inflation, hyperinflation. And the numbers are just stuck at, you know, it's inflation in the billion percent. And I'm not saying this to be to exaggerate. I'm talking about actual numbers. You know, inflation was hitting at a billion uh, percent. 5 billion percent inflation, you know, on a month to month basis. It was just ridiculous and the stores were empty. This is 2008. So by now I'm in undergrad and I'm thinking about what can we do to sort of help, uh, uh, you know, in, in a small way, the, the crisis to this, uh, the, the country through this crisis. Okay. Um, 
So what, what were the results of these factors, right? Well, first of all, obviously, uh, unmitigated poverty, right? Unmitigated poverty, a lot of jobs were lost. Um, you know, at one point, I think, you know, it was up to like 90% unemployed. Those are the numbers, right? A lot of people are, are informally employed through all this. People are still surviving in, in various ways, but the numbers were up to 90% unemployment, um, right? Um, so that, 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 that's the big thing. Um, the farms, which for a long time had, uh, had uh, employed a lot of people have also been disrupted. So people are moving into urban areas and, and there's this overcrowding. The family unit is also destroyed for a number of reasons. One of which is, again, a lot of parents were being raised, a lot of kids were being raised by their grandparents because their parents have passed away due to the HIV AIDS uh, plight. And plus as well, as things started to get tough in Zimbabwe, uh, a lot of people left the country, right, to see greener pastures. A lot of people went to South Africa. A lot of people early on went to the United Kingdom and other parts of the world as well. But those two, I remember being very popular destinations at the time for, for people to come to. Um, and that ties in with the next point, that brain drain, right? So not only have people died, a lot of young people are supposed to be moving the economy uh, forward, but a lot of people have also left the country. So all the time, and you know, a lot of people are leaving and they go to college and these spaces. So a lot of talent is being lost in that way as well. All this culminates in psychological trauma, which when we look at psychological trauma, um, the kids bear the brunt of this, right? You know, typically kids bear the brunt of this. And um, the, the idea here is, you know, when you go through trauma, another thing that may happen, if that's all you've known, is to normalize, and to normalize things that are not otherwise normal, right? That, that's how trauma, trauma hits us. So imagining the idea of, again, as I was saying, grandparents raising kids because their parents have died, and that being everybody knows families like that or everybody's from a family like that in, in, in my old neighborhood, right? Uh, everybody knows young men and women who at the time we might have thought were adults, but these folks were like 18, 19, 20, and I mean, they're technically adults, but we sold them a weather away and, 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 and die of HIV AIDS, and it was Every, all of us know people like that, right? Either we have people like that in our family or they are our immediate neighbors. Uh, the psychological trauma of what does it mean when, uh, when parents are, are, you know, you know, things like this, that at one point they had, uh, they had discovered, uh, you know, you just hear that something came up and there's diamonds. I love your diamonds in Maranga, which is a, a rural town somewhere. And people, you know, parents just get up and, and leave and, and go try work that hustle, right? You know, it's, it's illegal, it's unsafe, it's all these things. But that's what they have to do. And they're gone for months on end and they come back with, with lashes on their back because the army got there and, 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 and beat everybody up. What does that mean when you know that's what your parents are doing to, 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 to put you through school, right? And, and so forth. And people, and a lot of students can pay their way through school so they're staying at home and, and all these things. So we felt that there's a lot of uh, undiagnosed trauma. And again, this is not my specialization. It's just based on observation and conversations that we've had, right? You know, that is, prob that is work that some of my other friends are doing as well uh, uh, around mental health. But we did see that it was taking its toll. So what's our connection to the space? Well, uh, the space we chose to work in in Zimbabwe is a, is a, is a township known as Dangamfura in, in, in Mutare, Zimbabwe. And the reason why we connected with that is, and, and I'll tell you why we focus on that and how that plays into the big picture, right? So that's me over here, or oh, in both pictures actually, really, but that's me uh, at prize giving in third grade here. And I, you know, I was always very sharp, man. I, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But yeah, I had won some awards and me and my grandma, she was very, proud of me here for, 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 for what I had done. So that's my primary school that I went to, Shane Primary School. And that's me back there at some time uh, when I was at Michigan State University, but I'd gone back for the summer and we had a whole uh, festival, uh, a clubhouse festival. And that was me meeting with some of the students and 
just getting to uh, to know them a little bit. So that was all connection. So my my idea was, as I was thinking about this, how do we give back? And you know, there's a million different causes, a million million different avenues. And I thought, well, what we going, what I would like to do is to develop a model that is replicable in many different spaces. And I won't be the one to replicate it. I not necessarily, okay? So what if we work with two schools in such a way that we, we perfect that model? And if maybe we grow to three or four schools, that's cool. But we work in our community, but develop such a model that if somebody else came and said, okay, I wanna work with these two schools in another city or in the next township over, I can say like, all right, cool, nobody, you know, I'll share our material with you and you can develop something like that as well. Then let's see how far that can take us, right? Little by little, as opposed to wanting to do a lot of, a lot of nothing, you know? So that's something I'll talk about as well later. So we, we picked those two schools, uh, Shani, which is uh, my school, then Rujeko, which was uh, the, the neighboring rival school in our community. And I got to working on putting a board together. So what I did with putting a board together in case uh, people here might be interested in that process, um, I decided that I needed a presence in Zimbabwe, of course, but also I needed a presence in the US one because that's where I'm based. But also these are some of the spaces that I want to be fundraising in, right? This is where I would like to do so. I send out my proposal. At the time I was you know, fresh out of, uh, you know, a little bit after graduate school. Um, I mean, not graduate school, undergrad, you know, so I was really, I didn't, you know, I had a dollar and a dream, you know, one of these things that I'm going to type this thing up. And so I send it to, I can't remember, 15, 20 people who I know, between people in my family who I thought might be interested in this, people in the community that were like my friends uh, or that, that I thought this cause might appeal to, as well as some of my friends, uh, some of my colleagues in the U.S. who were who are maybe in the nonprofit sector or, or in these things. So just give me feedback. What do you think? And everybody gave me very constructive feedback. Some were editing the, you know, <laughs> the, the syntax of it, but some were telling me, yeah, make sure that, you know, your project doesn't get co-opted by politicians in Zimbabwe because they are aware of that system. And people here were telling me about, oh yeah, what you wanna do is get tax exempt. I didn't even know about any of that, you know? so. Based on that, gauging on that feedback and interest and where people were in their lives, I was able to put together a board, right? In the US, you would need a, um, a four person board if I remember correctly. So I found uh, between myself, uh, my sister, a good friend of mine from, from Zambia who was a you know, very good friend of mine, but was also minded in this way. Then a, a, another friend from graduate school who he had done a Pierce Corps stint, um, you know, he, he joined us as well as our, as our U.S. board. Uh, then my, my best friend and also, you know, very sharp guy in Zimbabwe sort of got to be our representative in Zimbabwe. And he too, oh, initially I built the board with, uh, with a couple of other guys from the rival school. Um, you know, twins who are fantastic, my, my guys and another friend, another cousin of mine in Zimbabwe. So that was to get it started. Eventually I let uh, the team in Zimbabwe evolve on its own, right? I don't wanna, you don't wanna micromanage everything, you know? So I might suggest like, yeah, work with this guy here, but you know, ultimately they have to establish their own dynamics. So eventually it changed over the years, but it's it's been great. So that's been our connection with the space um and of course that's the board but you know we have several volunteers from the community as well some of which i will talk about uh as we proceed here oh yeah and then a pivotal person we worked with was my headmaster when i was in primary school i wish i should have put his picture up here when i was in when i started school when i was in first grade he retired when i was like in second grade but he's such a veteran educator that he was my headmaster but before that he had been you know, my mother said, master, is this very senior guy, you know, so very respected educator. So he's sort of become our ambassador. I know this Mr. Godo. Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful man. Um, so what is the work that we actually do? I've said a lot here without actually talking about the work we do. Um, our intention, 
why did I go to work first? All right, let me do this. Let me talk about, oh no, I might have skipped the page then. Sorry. Oh, the philosophy, good. The philosophy, yeah, this is important here. Um, what is our philosophy? What, 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 what did you set out to do? A friend of, a, a board member of ours who came in at some point uh, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, kept, captured our essence perfectly when he said, this project is about community building from the psyche up, right? from the psyche up. We always want to do, a lot of people want to do top down things, right? We're going to build a whatever, you know, which is important to do. But if you do all those things and the, and the, and the people are still, the psyche is still down, the confidence in the community is down, the pride in, in being who you are is still down, you know, you build this sort of uh, uh, monuments to nothing, you know? So, we wanted to make sure that we are getting, and this is why I was I was enjoying very much uh, uh, Noel's presentation because uh, you know they 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 you know they they're doing a great job of that you know and I actually got a lot of ideas that I'm like oh we should we should do that yeah sit in a circle and, and do all that right which is fantastic uh, community building from the psyche up how can we do this so we started to think about things that we can we can do immediately. Little things like the, for the fact that coming out of the colonial system and going forward, um, the education system was tailored towards uh, creating civil servants, right? And, uh, you know, it hasn't innovated too much away from that. And so the reward really is for the most book smart person routinely and everything else is frowned upon. Well, what can we do that, that privileges the artistic students? Or the students who are who are more entrepreneurial, or the students who are sporty, or the students who are um, who are just all round good citizens, right? You know, they may not be like the sharpest, but but you know, that counts for something in the real world. And we want to create a community in which those things are celebrated as well. Okay, so community building from from the psyche up, and these are some of the philosophies that that the the guiding missions to instill and rebuild a sense of service and pride in Zimbabwe's grassroots communities. Part of what you see when your pride in a community is destroyed or is, has been disrupted is your level of investment in it, right? You can tell who is very proud of their living space, hypothetically, just by the level of, of how it's kept, you know? How, you know, if you go to somebody's home uh, you just see that, ah, yeah, no, this place looks very unkempt. Uh, you know, I might be reading too much into it, but they they may not. But that's what happens when you don't have pride in this. So the idea is to start with rejuvenating the pride uh, in your space, right? Even as you're going through it, even through tough times, how can we uh, uh, res res resurrect the sort of sense of pride in, um, in our communities, right? Then of course, to provide a positive influence for children in these communities, uh, not, for, not because there's a lack of them, of course, but we also wanna connect them in, in, in ways that are mutually beneficial. These communities are already very rich, but we also can't deny the idea of brain drain I was talking about, that a lot, that a lot of people left. And sometimes if you live in certain communities, more, uh, and, you, know, you know, a, a lower economic class, where everybody who makes it gets out of there. Sometimes, you know, you don't get to, to, to interact with, this pe with, with, with these people. So wanted to bridge that gap as well. To provide youth with opportunities and extracurricular development. So those are some of the things we'll, we do as well. Then of course, to encourage partnerships between entities around the world towards philanthropy. So I'm very proud, if I'm proud of anything, as much as anything, it's the partnerships we've been able to create. Sometimes I just have to sit back and say, look, you guys, you know, work with these kids and, and or even we've even co 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 organized other organizations to work together. And we'll see that shortly as well. Then of course, to open up career and leadership doors for young people, um, you know, and it's not just, it's not just been the, the, the students we work with, but even other younger people who've stepped up as volunteers or program managers. Now this is 
entirely on a volunteer basis right now because of for the same funding issues that Noah was talking about. But um, the experience has been invaluable to them. The, the confidence that comes from saying I'm the one who ran this project has been incredible for, for a lot of them. Plus also, you know, through working with people like uh, myself and the other leadership, you know, just to be able to help them refine their resumes, uh, help them with the job search and things like that. So that's, those are some of the other opportunities. So let's actually look at the work we do now that we've spoken about the philosophy here. So this is a brief list of the work we do. So while we set out to disrupt the narrative of just rewarding the kids financially, you know, the scholarship model is the oldest model, right? We, even though we didn't want to do that, but it was such a convenient and simple way to get into these places, right? Before you try to sell the idea of, we want to do an annual festival, we want to bring in professionals, What's, what, what, what's one of the simplest things you can do? Well, let's, let's, let's pay some fees for these kids, right? So what we did, and actually Clubhouse celebrates 10 years of existence right now, which if you know anything about the nonprofit world, 10 years is a long, long time. I read somewhere that 85% of all nonprofit organizations are shut down within the first three years of existence. You know, so this is, this is you know, just we are still around. We may not be as big as we want it to be, but uh, we're still kicking. It's, it's pretty cool. So the work, so we, we spoke to the two schools and said, look, um, let's have, you know, have students write uh, application letters in the form of essays on a topic. And the topic changes year to year. But at the time, we're like, just, you know, and we, our, our board members will sit down and based on how much money we have, we... You know, we'll give we'll, we'll we'll give them scholarships for the school year and maybe two, uh, depending on how that money looks like. And initially, this was just supposed to be a way in, right, into these spaces. And we actually wanted to do two students from each school that we were going to to award. As fate would have it, um, a friend of my, a colleague of my mother had. Uh, worked with a few people to get an organization going, but it had failed through. And they had this, so when, when, your, when your nonprofit organization shuts down and you have this money that you had collected for it, it's supposed to go to another charity. You can't just keep that money, you know? So they're like, ah, yeah, we have, and bear in mind, and I must emphasize this, bear in mind that the, the board that I came together up with, right, was all people who were ranging from between 20, and 24 at the time well those were my peers so a lot of them were undergrads uh a lot of them were were were, were unemployed and some of them were had recently started families i'm saying this to say we had no money at all <laughs> you know out of our own pockets at all so so even this so what might sound like minor figures to you were game changing to us so we were gonna do two students, two students, because we figured it was like thirty dollars a term for each student, and we can probably scrounge together the the, the hundred and fifty dollars we would need to make that happen, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. All right. A friend of my, oh, this this this, this lady, God bless her, says, "Look, my organization is shutting down, and we had four hundred dollars we were gonna use. I want it all used for this purpose, all of it, right? So we didn't get much space. So we're like, ah." We can't spare it out, you know, she wants it all gone right away. So we're like, all right, let's do 10. <laughs> hey, let's do 10 students. Uh, so we did 10 each school. I mean, five each school, sorry. Then we also, so we were able to do that. And the crazy thing about it, and this is talking about, I don't want to get all metaphysical, you know, but the, the crazy thing about this is the way, whatever you believe in, right? yourself whether it's god whether it's the universe whether it's fate whatever but i've found that in life you 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 rise up to the level of of your faith kind of right you know i again i don't mean to get too 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 weird about this but i say that to say i always think that if we had gone with the two at the time i think we would have continued to work at that pace okay which would have been okay but since she gave us that money to start with 10, we have never gone below 10, right? 
since to, since we since that time when we had no money whatsoever until now 30 30 terms in a row and we have paid for at least 10 right now my, i was talking to my to my i was reading the report from our since schools recently opened after the COVID shutdown uh to my to our guy in zimbabwe and he was telling that yeah we paid off all of them even though the fees were jacked all the way up because a lot of schools had lost income because of COVID. you know sixteen hundred dollars or something that that we we sent home for this purpose think about that that we were struggling with on 150 right but we haven't gone down below that so that, that's just amazing so the scholarships we've continued to do that that's our most signature event uh in addition to that we've also done ambassadorships what we call ambassadorships are students who be based on our budget at the time if we have the money so we have the 10 that we're definitely uh, will sign, we sign contracts to pay for then there may be like five other students who we say based on whether we can get the money but we really want you as part of our program so they get uh the mentorship uh the gear you know the, the the and all the stuff that participate in the community service uh things and based on whether we have the money we'll also pay for them but sometimes we don't but we feel like the program is still very beneficial even if it's not that community service so that's uh as in this picture here i've never seen i love this picture so much because i've never seen people doing service sorry uh so geeked about it they're so excited um but that's the that's the that's the nature of it right as part of to maintain their their scholarships our students have had to do community service but here's the thing because but that goes back to that idea of rebuilding uh pride in your community right so the idea was if you serve your community not only does it benefit your community but it also you also feel some ownership of it right wait a minute we cleaned this path the last time we were here why are people throwing trash all over it wait a minute this is this is this is us this belongs to us right so community service has been key but one of the biggest success stories of clubhouse international for me because now the kids we started with were in sixth and seventh grade back then some of them have since graduated high school some of them are are, are later on in their high school years they will call us without us setting it up or without us having put money into it like hey uh, uh dr mavima uh just to let you know that we got together with the with the with the other alumni of the program and we are going to this old people's home and we'll be spending time there that is the the uh what do you call it contagious nature of the work we are doing that that's what we wanted to do right it was never about just us but that fact that that ripple effect right that we see now uh it has been beautiful we also do mentorships and workshops our our, our team goes there that we bring in guests uh from places like the the red cross or our one some of our favorite partners have been the what we call what are called the media club these guys who are young media professionals in Zimbabwe they go back uh with their fancy cameras and 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 sort of the kids have a, have a field day with that and different groups we had the a group called uh, green governance which I'll talk about shortly who went and did a whole tree planting day with the kids so so it's been fun and now you know when I'm back home I, I go there and I see them as well then we talk about um you know we just talk about different things about how to um you know chasing your dreams and and how to find these opportunities and how to network in these things so one of the things that I'm proudest of is the annual festival as represented in this picture here when folks are going crazy we call it annual festival we've had to skip a couple of years one or two because the money wasn't right the past couple of years because of COVID but we've done like maybe six editions of it since 2013 it's so much fun right the it centers around a soccer game and we alternate the final game one year it's is the is the boys you know the the boys soccer match this other year is the girls uh soccer match you know which again was something that was a little more side um marginalized until we got there but we do that now and the, the girls are you know it's it's uh as we would say it's it's lit it's it's a fun time but that's the that's the pivotal event but then we leave the rest of the creativity to 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 the schools they come up with uh dances you know traditional dancing uh performances speeches there's a great pan you know it's like just like 45 seconds long but a great 
pan, uh, speech on Pan-Africanism by the seventh grade student at the time that I listened to at least once or twice, uh, you know, a year to this day because it's that powerful. Um, we buy, then we buy food and, and, and we have a great time. The community comes out, the two schools are there, but the community, the parents come out and we all just enjoy here. We converse and uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic time. We've been able to get some government officials to come and attend these events too, which is amazing, right? Because, you know, if you know anything about uh, the idea, the, the place of, you know, this idea of the government officials, they are very untouchable, right? Unreachable in so many ways. So just to see them uh, come to these events in a non-political, I mean, of course, in a political capacity because they are there because of who they are, but they also come not to campaign or anything, just to be there, you know, and, and it's been great. Um, local tourism, uh, that's uh, something to do with this picture here. A lot of the, because of their, first of all, in any place, right? Local tourism is very tough to get into. Even in the US, I find that when I go to places and I ask the people who live in the area, if they have gone to the, to the sites around there, most people will say like they've never been, right? Because it's, it's just not seen as, as interesting. You are muted, Dr. Mavim. Oh no, how long have I been muted? No, 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 for a second. Just. Too. All right, for a second, <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, so I was saying that, you know, a lot of people don't even go to, uh, uh, to their local tourist sites, even here, right? You know, you, you know, it's always people from outside. So that's one thing, but also based on, 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 on economic standing, socioeconomic standing for a lot of these folks, they live in some of the most beautiful part, places in the world ever. Uh, and it might be like a, as nearby as 50 miles away, you know, hundred miles away, but they've never been, even though it's in their region, because, you know, everything takes money. So, but we try to promote that as well. So they get, they get to, to see their their spaces right so we every now and then we'll say you know we have a little bit surplus you guys go out uh with the team and 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 see your see see your country right see your see your see your city see so this was at, at vumba at vumba uh one of the national parks and it's they had a great time then even though the part the part of the board that's in the u.s mainly say it serves to fundraise for our programs in Zimbabwe. We also like to do little things with the community here, right? Because we we exist here. So every now and then we'll do a, you know, and a lot of them are usually like sort of fundraisers, but we don't just ask for money. We also do little programs. We've done a few years ago, we did a thousand, uh, it's part of an international series known as the thousand poets for, 100,000 poets for change. So you can host it in different cities. And we had hosted it in Michigan, brought it with different poets together. Just had a good time talking about social justice in the different communities we represent. Uh, we also do different things like um, like bowling uh, as a fundraiser and all these things. So we try to, and we've also worked with uh, different organizations from the US who are doing their own programming here, but sought to find ways in which we can connect that to our cause back home. And I think that's what I'm talking about on the next slide here. Right, so partnerships, yeah. So one of the, my favorite partnerships is every December, the community, the, the basketball, a semi-professional basketball team in, 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 in Bagamfura, there's been a drug pandemic in, 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 in uh, drug epidemic in, in Bagamfura, in Zimbabwe really, but in Bagamfura as well, right? Since that's our area of focus with the, the cough syrup and lately uh, versions of, of meth have been doing their rounds, it's, it's pretty bad. So, so the basketball team, they started what they call Basketball Against Drugs and it's a fantastic event. And it's one that we partner with them every year. Uh, you know, we we'll throw in a little bit of money, uh, have some of our volunteers there. And that's a picture taken from, from them. The basket quality of, you know, they do all things, karate, volleyball, but it's an all day festival. Then you have like drug counselors and even recovering addicts sort of speaking on their experiences and, and, uh, you know, it's hard to see the impact right away, but I do believe that in the long term, we'll see. We've done this for like four or five years. National Tree Planting Day is the one I was talking about with the Zim gov uh, Green Governance. 
green governance zimbabwe um you know just get together with the kids they they plant trees um and 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 so forth so that's nice the red cross has come through a couple of times the media club i was talking about this is this is one of the pictures where they had one of the kids working the camera you know and the kids took this very seriously they had when they sent me the folders of all the pictures they had taken they had the pictures that the media club the professionals had taken and the ones that the, that the kids had taken in a different folder and they looked really good on both sides it wasn't like these were much better in fact some of the kids were did very well also worked with groups like jdi hoops which is a basketball program out of grand rapids that uh that works with with inner city youth and but and for our first festival actually those uh those kids from from grand rapids michigan fundraised for us and actually bought our first set of, set of shirts and, and soccer balls and so forth that were delivered in, in Zimbabwe. So these partnerships have been great. There's also been partnerships where I've worked with middle schools to establish uh, pen pals with, with the kids and the, you know, they exchange information that way. It's been, it's been fantastic. It's, it's, you know, so the partnerships as well have been great. Um, and we continue to build on those. And if you're interested in partnering with us, I would, uh, I would love to, to, to have that as well. Um, do I have anything else? Uh, let me see here. Oh yeah, no. So that's a little bit about Club Boss International uh, from me. Um, we have, uh, we try to have maintain a vibrant social media uh, presence. We're on Instagram and Twitter, and that's our handle right here. Uh, we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn and um and and youtube and if you just look up clubhouse international and um and uh you know make sure it's our logo because i think there's a couple other versions of it out there um and yeah i won't play the video anymore uh because i want to get to the questions but i will trust you guys to follow us on youtube and you can watch it there it's the last video that was uploaded to our youtube and it's only like two minutes long so it'll be worth it and that way you can also make sure you follow us on YouTube. So uh, thank you guys so much uh, for, for your audience. And uh, Dr. Choti, the floor is back, is, is back on you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Mavima. I, I've heard a little bit about your organization, not from you, but from the social media, from sometimes the, the news that is shared, but this is just wonderful to be here to listen to the beginnings and what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Very wonderful. And, and the same way I said in the beginning, it's, it's just you're, you're responding to a need. Mm -hmm. I really need that you, you observed in the community. So what I'm hearing and what I, um, my key message here is that um, there's no special time to really give back, to support, to to. You can do it from wherever you are. You didn't have to go back to Zimbabwe to be able to do this. And we all can do whatever that we really think uh, is a, a cause that we're passionate about. We can support, you don't have to start our own. We can support what's already out there, Dr. Movima's Clubhouse, uh, Nawal's project. So we really, personally, I, I would say I have no reason why I can say that I, I, I have a, a passion, I have a, a feeling that I can do something for the community and there's no opportunity to, there are many. And, and I really feel good that you are able to highlight some of the, 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 the programs that are out there and especially run by our alumni. Mm -hmm. So it's a pleasure again, and uh, there's a lot to speak about. Uh, Activities like this, really, I just, when I, when I listen all the time to people doing something for the community, something that is impacting one life, two, three, it doesn't have to be everybody in that community. It just touches my heart in so many ways and I'll keep following, I'll support. I don't know that I've really supported. I, I know I support by liking, but, but I will support in many other ways, Shingi and Nawa, I definitely mm -hmm. will. So at this time, again, I'm gonna open it um, to the floor to the audience. If somebody has something to chip in, ask a question of Shingi or whatever that is, the floor is open for anyone that wants to 
contribute. And Shingi, if you may, and share the screen. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Good. Yes. The floor is open. I don't have a question. I have a comment. Sure. Uh, you can donate to this cause via Amazon. So if you order through Amazon, you can go through Amazon Smile and pick the charity that you would like funds to be donated to. Mm -hmm. And so if people use Amazon, I strongly suggest that you put the, the, his group out there as your charity. I do it for what I order for the ASC. So any orders that the ASC has, then they donate to his charity. Indeed. Thank you so much, Nico. And that is, uh, that is at no extra cost. You know, that is just like 0.5% of, of all those purchases, uh, uh, you know, they, they come this way. So that, that goes a long way indeed. And a little uh, bit help. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on, on that note, let me tie that to, to what uh, Damaris was just saying right now, which is to say, I don't know if I contribute. Sometimes I just like or do these things. But th that's the point right there. You have no idea what it means for us when we see that, right? You, it, it is so empowering because, for example, somebody came in and gave me that quote. This, this is a board member who maybe in the big picture, I'll forget who it was. He was there for a year or two, you know? But he gave us that uh, community building from the psyche up. That's his legacy with the organization, right? But it keeps us going, right? It, keeps, it gives us a starting point when I have to present about this. Uh, I remember one time saying, when I was really annoyed and, 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 and just uh, depressed about the whole process and me saying to my cousin who was, uh, you know, it's a young guy, you know, he was in his teens. I said, man, I think I'm just going to stop. I think we're going to shut this down. And in his being smart responses like, well, well, you can leave. We're going to keep doing it. That's all he said. But that is such a priceless contribution to the legacy of, 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 of Clubhouse because I, of that comment, I felt like I had to do it one more day. I say that to say all these things, all these things that we do, they, they mean a lot. Never think that, the, you know, if you didn't contribute financially, which we absolutely must do, um, or, or, you know, or whatever, all these things, whether you like a post on social media, whether you encourage us, whether you tell us that, you know, this is good, whether you have perfect example. Another guy who had to do, he, he had to do some community service hours. And he, you know, since we don't do a lot of actual work on the ground here that you can do, but he was an accounting major and he helped, he spent an hour helping us structure our books, you know, and then, you know, that's the last we heard of him. But that has changed the game so much for us to this day. Those are the books that we still use. And it's so much better than our first years when we were just trying to figure it out in, a, in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet, right? So, yeah, just to say that whatever you do is very, very important for the work that we do. So thank you so much. That's wonderful to hear, Shingi. We, we definitely appreciate all you do and I encourage everybody among us to support in whichever way that we can really. It's, it's, we're doing this for the world. We're starting with the communities, but we're making the world a better place starting from where we are. Indeed. Indeed. So anyone else before we close? But the good thing, the recording is gonna be on YouTube. So that's why I say, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say that we, we don't, need to have as many people in the audience as possible. But I'm glad that since we started um, having this program online, virtually, we are able to record and share. So that's a, a, another way. You can share after after this is done and, and posted, we can again share it, we share so people can, can get to learn and um, know what's happening in these discussions. So just wanted to make that comment that, um, we will share the recording. I know not everybody sometimes gets the time to get to our website or the YouTube channel, but I will share this so that you can also have some time or have a 
something to share with your friends or colleagues that didn't make it today. All right. Um, I perhaps think that if nobody has anything, we can close it here. At least we have a, a few more minutes. Ty, thank you so much. I see Ty commenting and saying thank you to, for sharing about both organizations. And Ty is your friend. Shing, he told us in the beginning, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back. Ty was actually, and, in, 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 you know, shout out to Ty. And when I was doing this uh, at that stage in my life, when I was in uh, getting my master's at Penn State, so he was there right at the beginning of, of all this. So thank you so much for joining us, Ty. I really appreciate it. Indeed. I would like to say that I'm really impressed. Um, I see that you have been doing uh, such a great job and so many activities achieved. Um, it is a great and rich experience. Um, I feel that uh, I have more to learn from you. Yeah, I feel our organization is just a little bit <laughs> small comparing with your organization. Yeah, well done and keep the good job. Yeah. For sure, I look forward to to exchanging ideas. I just I just talk big, but uh, I can already tell that your 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 yours is is, is is bigger at this point. But yeah, we'll exchange ideas. I followed you on on all the platforms, and so we'll we'll, we'll be in touch. That I way. will do the same. Yeah. Okay. So, I already that's, follow you. Yeah. Okay. That's really wonderful. I mean, that's part of why we're here is to build these connections, know what we can do together, how we can support one another. So I'm really glad that we have a platform like this where we get to meet and learn from one another basically and get to really know what's happening in the continent from people that are on the ground or connected to the ground. So thank you so much again. I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, event, if possible. I know it's not always possible, especially given the time difference or the, the commitments, but we do appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing about your organizations with us and we look forward to learning more through other avenues. And thank you so much. Perhaps you can come back again and get to hear more as we advance, maybe two, three years and we can come back and, and you know, keep the conversation going. But thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, Nicole. Bye, Noah.